Hi, my name is Aaron with iBoard Repair and iPhone Data Recovery, and today I'm going to be working on an iPhone 11 Pro that's in here for data recovery. Uh, the customer hopes to recover the pictures from the phone. Um, I have the phone right here. This case has been uh, very badly smashed. I believe it was reported as being run over. Um, so as you can see, it is uh, you know very severe, very smashed. Um, I've already taken the screen off this phone, but that's all I've done to it so far. Um, the motherboard itself looks to be not too bad. It's not too bent, which is very, very nice um, when it comes to recovery. Uh, so the first thing I like to do with uh, no power iPhones is to see what it does on my DC power supply. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to check the, the, the amperage draw on the DC power supply. Um, kind of see what the what the phone is doing as an initial diagnostic step. So first, I guess I'll just take a quick look over the board. And I don't see too much uh, too much information can be gathered yet. Okay, so yeah, let's just see. Um, my DC power supply is connected uh, with probes. I like to use probes so I can easily move things around. Okay, so there's no amp draw right off the bat. This would be giving me a draw if there was a, a main short on the board, which there is not. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the power button to prompt it to boot now. And it actually does nothing when I prompt it to boot. So when it does nothing, that indicates a few things to me. Um, that could be uh, a lot of the times a power rail can be short and that will give me no amperage pool like that. Um, so it might be something like that. I'm also gonna check what it's pulling on the, through the charge port on my ammeter. So let me see what it does when I do that. So it's pulling something, it's going uh, from point 0.2, point 0.3, up to point 0.4 now. It looks like it's alternating between 0.38 and 0.41. Um, so that's not normal. Um, I wonder if I can feel any heat. I do feel a bit of heat. So there's a good chance there's a short on this board. Hopefully it's not a RAM or a CPU short um, because in that case it would be unrecoverable. Um, so let's double check. I'll go ahead and pull this motherboard out of the housing now. Um, I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, so I have the motherboard out, and let's take a look at it. For how badly smashed it was, it looks pretty good. You know, it really does not look that bad. I would almost expect this board would still be booting, um, but I don't think it is. I'm gonna grab a good charge port, a good battery, and a good screen and just double check. Okay, I have the screen, battery, and charge port hooked up, so let's prompt it to boot and see uh, if it does anything different than what we just saw. I, I don't really expect it will. Let's see. Yeah, it looks the same still. Right now it's giving me a 0.41 amp draw, which sometimes can indicate a short. Um, there's got to be a short on this board. I'm, I'm almost sure because of the amp draws that I've seen. Let me just make sure it's not in a DFU mode. I don't think it is. Oh, I'm incorrect. It is in DFU mode. Okay, um, DFU mode is good. Uh, 
what can uh, what can I gather? So DFU mode, it can definitely be caused by bad uh, sandwich connection. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna split these motherboards and uh, see uh, what it looks like when I have the bottom motherboard removed. So I'll go ahead and uh, do that. Okay, I have my jig out or uh, my hot plate out here. And I'll go ahead and uh, place the motherboard into the hot plate. And this hot plate, um, I like to set it to, what do I like to set it to? I like to set this one to around one. 185, 186. Um, I'm not sure the exact temperature that this one is actually getting to. I've never, I've never calibrated or measured it. I just know that um, when I set it to about 185 on there for about three minutes, that it's a, uh, it's ready to pull. So let me put on a timer. And this one will be ready in just a couple of minutes. I like to enter this one right about here. I always like to go and uh, enter at the screw holes, uh, just because I know it's ground underneath them for the most part. So in about two minutes, I'll be back to uh, remove that. Okay, it's been uh, about two minutes and 40 seconds, so a, a few more seconds and uh, this should be ready to split. Like I said, I like to enter about right here. Let's see if it's ready. And it was fine. So I don't see any missing pads along the edges. I don't run my fume extractor when I have uh, the video recording because it's too loud. Um, so I have to hold my breath when those steams are coming out like that. So I'll clean this up a little bit and then I'm actually just going to go straight into seeing if it will boot with the screen and the charge port and a battery um, because I just tested this last week and I, I noticed uh, that on these iPhone 11s you don't need the bottom board at all in order to pull data from them. So the motherboard looks great to me. It doesn't look like it's damaged. And I'm hoping it was just uh, some some of these sandwich line disc uh, some of these sandwich line pads along the outside were disconnected to the bottom motherboard uh, with a like a solder crack or something like that. Because everything else looks to be intact. I don't see any uh, any cracked chips. The CPU and the RAM doesn't look cracked. It looks great. Um, everything looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and attach a screen and a battery and a charge port. 
as it is now and uh, let's see if it boots. That will be great if this boots because this is rush data. So the, the person needs their data fast and it will be done fast. I have a feeling that it will just boot, honestly. If it does, that will be terrific. So prompting to boot with the charge port. Let's see what happens. No boot. It's exactly the same as before, which is uh, the 0.41 and it's in DFU mode. Um, let's see if there's a lot of heat on the board or not. And there is quite a bit of heat, enough that like it's, it's troubling. So I'm going to measure some power rails because I, I don't like that heat, even though it feels like it's it's probably in, in a DFU mode. How strange, it's not in DFU mode. Oh, there it goes. USB device not recognized. So that is not good. It doesn't like that. It doesn't know it's an iPhone anymore. So there's, there's almost surely a short on this board somewhere. Oh, you know what? I'm not 100% sure that charge port was all the way connected. Still, this board is very hot. And to me that indicates that there might be a short somewhere. So I'm just going to probe some of these capacitors that are around all these coils because a lot of the times they're connected to them. And see if I find any capacitor that has both legs ground, which usually means it's short. So, let's see. So that's beeping. It doesn't necessarily mean it's short. Um, but let's see what the reading is. Point zero three seven. That's probably not short. That's probably normal. It's just a low resistance line. Uh, so a little bit of voltage can provide a lot of power. It's even lower at point zero 0.01, but that's probably also not short still. And it will be better if I figure out the names, the net names of these lines so I can see if they're one of these CPU power rails or if it's something that shouldn't be that low. So I'm gonna open up ZXW, which is my board view software. Let's open that up. This is an 11 Pro. And let's see what these lines are that I'm measuring. Uh, PPDCS S1, that's usually, um, I mean, it, I don't know what this line is. 
it's obviously a CPU power line, but it, it might be RAM. Um, but that one's probably fine. I, I don't remember if that was one of the short ones or that appeared short. It wasn't anyway. Okay, so that doesn't matter. PPS RAM S1. So that one's probably normal too. That sounds like a, a low voltage line. I mean a low a resistance line I should say. Let's check that one out. PP SOC S1. SOC shouldn't really be, oh, you know what? Sometimes it's low like that. Let's see how, how low it was again. 0.01. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna try to inject a small amount of voltage and see if it draws it like it's a short line or if it kind of like rejects it, doesn't pull it at all. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that's not short. So I'm gonna move on and, and assume that's normal. That's the same line. Let me check out what this line is. PPCPU, that's gonna be a low, low resistance line and it's gonna beep every time. So it's the next one it looks like. Okay, let's keep on moving. Looks like another low resistance line. Yep, PPCPU again. It's fine. Okay, so this line is 0 .004, so that's pretty low. So this one might actually be short. I'm not quite sure yet, but that seems much more short than anything else we've seen so far. And that's PPGPU. Interesting. I'll do the same thing and see if it takes any of the amperage that I'm trying to inject into it, any of the voltage. It's hard to tell, but this line still does seem normal to me. It's just a very, very low resistance line. I'm gonna say that's okay. And I'm gonna keep checking things. So nothing's jumping out at me.
So if I still can't find anything jumping out at me, I'm going to start to check the voltages on some of these lines. Because it could be that any of these coils are loose. And it would be quite hard to tell because the underfill in between will hold it together even when the solder pads underneath have uh, become cracked or loose. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect the charge port and battery one more time just to make sure there was an error when I was trying to connect before. Um, because things, things seem okay. I haven't checked NAND voltages, so I'm actually going to check that. That's a, that's a good idea to check as well. So I checked most of the you know, CPU voltages, but NAND voltages can also be causing these types of problems. So let's see where they're at. So let me check the 1V8 line real quick. Which is right in here. And there we go, that's the short. Great, 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 found it. I knew something was short. Let's just make sure that the rest of the NAND lines aren't also short, like a 3VO or 2.63 is what the new one is. So check the one right next to it over here and see if this is short. That one's good. And maybe there's one more. Yeah, here's one. OV9. That's also good. So I have a 1.8 line short. I wonder where that's short. It doesn't look like NAND is cracked. So let's see where this line is actually going. This line is going. It goes a lot of places. It could even be a CPU problem. I'm hoping it's not a CPU problem. I'm hoping I just have some sort of a bad cap somewhere or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject uh, 1.8 volts into that line and I'm going to see what heats up. So I'll just take a quick look of where I should be focusing on the board. And honestly this one has this line all over the place. So for now I'll just look at the caps that are going around NAND and see if it's any of those ones. It could even be the one I'm um, directly jump, um, injecting into, so I have to make sure to watch for that. I just use canned air, flip it upside down and frost comes out, and that's what I use to freeze the board. So let's go ahead and inject into here and see what we can see. So I am a little suspect of the cap that I'm injecting into right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to inject into a different point and see if this cap is still heating up because that looks uh rather melted already. So let's see where a different point is on this line. Let's go right there. So this cap is also part of the line, so I'll inject into this cap instead. And I'll keep an eye out on this cap and I'll see if that one heats up. I hope it does. That will be nice if it does.
And it does. Look at that. It's starting to heat up. So boom, baby, right there. That's my culprit. Good thing I, I remember that sometimes the cap you're injecting into can actually be the problem. Um, and I only suspected that because that's the biggest uh, cap that's surrounding this uh, the NAND chip that's on that line. All the rest of them are a lot smaller for whatever reason. I tend to notice the big ones more. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that cap off and then that should uh, that should fix it. Then I'll put this in a jig and I'll pull data from it. I do believe that you do not need to put these into jigs to pull data from it. I believe that it will boot if you just update it with the top board only and everything will work. However, doing an update to any of these phones while you're doing data recovery is always risky and you avoid it if it's possible. So just bearing that in mind, I'm going to put it in the jig so I don't have to update it. Let me grab my bold board holder for this. I'll make it a little easier for me. Okay, so I am back trying to uh, connect this battery screen and charge port and let's see if this thing boots now. I'm gonna do top board first um, because it should actually just boot to uh, swipe to recover screen. So let's see if it does that. Oh. You know what, I I, uh, I never pulled this cap off. Sorry, I was distracted for a moment. I had a customer come in. Um, I never even grabbed my, uh, oh, here it is. My, uh, my platform. So let's uh, pull this cap off. So that line should now be cleared, so we'll double check with our multimeter. Yep, it's good now. So now I'll put the battery screen and charge port on and see if it boots. All right, here comes the moment of truth. I fully expect it will boot now. So let's see. 
Aha, Apple logo. So let me check the password on this while I have it open. Who is this for? I'll pause just for a moment, just so we don't have to wait so long. And there we go, after another like 45 seconds, it, it booted. So, touch works. If I put in the passcode, it's most likely gonna take me to the swipe to recover screen. 3275, 3275. Yeah, there it goes, swipe to recover. So I've tested this before on a phone that's already been that's already had the data pulled, and if you do an update at this point, um, it let me uh, get past the screen and it let me take uh, the data from it. But if I don't do an update, it freezes on the last digit when I enter the passcode. Um, like I was saying earlier, I don't like to update these phones if I don't have to, just because it adds another variable and another chance for something to go wrong. So I'm going to take this back apart. I'm going to put in the jig. I'm going to take data from it that way. So I will go ahead and. Uh, Pause the video again. Okay, I have my jig here, so let's go ahead and uh, put the put the board into it. So, uh, looking back at this repair, um, splitting of the board was unnecessary. If I would have done uh, a little bit more diagnostic work before I split the board, I could have found that short um, without splitting it. Um, it doesn't matter too much, but um, it is interesting to note. So I'm really liking iPhone 11 and 11 Pros and Pro Max data recovery so far. Um, it's funny because every time these new phones come out, a lot of panic ensues. When the iPhone 10 first came out, people were terrified because of the, the stacked motherboard design. Um, and then when this one came out, it was very different. And it's funny, iPhone 10s were my favorite for a very long time. Um, these ones can grow to be my favorite next who knows and uh, it just takes it's it just comes down to taking the time to get to know these phones they're not as they're not as scary as they seem once you figure out how things are, are working together um, I'm finding these phones these newer ones to be even easier than the old ones sometimes Okay, there it goes. So everything should be all connected now. And this should actually be ready to uh, extract data from. Um, and this computer's free, so that will be fine. So 
So I'll wait for this to boot one more time and then uh, bring you back one more time. Okay, it turned on, so let's put the passcode in. And it looks like we're in. Here we go, we have access. So, normal data, uh, data recovery job, that was, a, that was an interesting one. Um, uh, so kind of as a recap, I opened it up and I, I uh, it was funny because it did go to DFU mode the first time, so it seemed like the battery was able to power through the 1V8 short and get it to go to DFU mode. Um, after I split the board, it didn't go to DFU mode anymore, but the computer did recognize it, but it was an unrecognized device, so it didn't know what it was. It couldn't tell what it was anymore. Um, I split the boards at that point because I noticed there was heat on the board and I figured there was probably a short on that motherboard somewhere. Um, so I split the boards and I checked the CPU power rails first and uh, some of those were kind of deceptive because some of them were low resistance lines so they look like they might have been short but they actually weren't short. Um, I almost ran out of ideas and at the last moment I remembered to check the NAND power lines because I, I knew that those power lines could also uh, give similar types of behavior as that as uh, um, because when I tried to prompt to boot with my DC power supply, I noticed that it didn't prompt to boot at all, which uh, indicates a short a lot of the time. So that was kind of where I got the idea of the short, um, along with feeling the heat. Um, so when I found that, um, you know, I injected voltage using the free spray and the, the cap heated right up. That was short. Once we removed the cap, um, the phone booted right up. Um, I tested it without the bottom board first, and we, we were able to see that touch works, and it, it did turn on. And then... Uh, I put it in the jig so I didn't have to do an update. And uh, now that's in the jig, data is available to take. Um, the customer is going to be very happy with this one. Uh, this one wasn't too difficult, so that was nice. Um, but it still gave us a little bit of a, a little bit of a surprise challenge in there. So um, it's always nice to figure out. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope it kind of shows you some of the techniques that I use and uh, the mindset that I take going into these problems. Um, I'm very open-minded when I go into these problems because I, I have no idea what I'm going to get into. And I kind of go off of past experiences and uh, I go off hunches that I'm feeling and then I just double check those hunches. Um, pretty much just keep double checking until you find what went wrong. And it's a, it's a talent that takes a, a while to develop. Um, but once you develop, you know, your, your good sense of, uh, of what's going on, um, you kind of start to pick up on, on cues without even realizing that you are. Um, so once again, thanks for stopping by. I hope you stop by again. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.